Bijan Robinson says the Buccaneers are one of just two teams that he's had on-site visits with, and that may not be great news after all. That and more on today's episode of Locked On Bucks. You are Locked On Buccaneers, your daily Tampa Bay Buccaneers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. <laughs> What's up and welcome to the Locked On Bucks podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This is your daily podcast covering the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, so please subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so you always get the latest episodes when they drop. I'm David Harrison, my co-host James Jarko, not here for today's episode, but you can find us both doing writing about the Buccaneers at BucksGameDay.com and BucksNation.com. You can also find us on Twitter. I'm at DHarrison82. James is at Jarko underscore Bucks and the show is at Locked on Bucks. I want to thank you for making Locked on Bucks first listen or your first view of the day. A special shout out to our everydayers going into our final weekend before the NFL draft will be here. This time next week, we will be reacting, talking about a first round pick. Well, hopefully, unless they trade out of the first round, of course, by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And we'll be looking forward to day two of the NFL draft. But today's episode is brought to you by HelloFresh. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Go to HelloFresh.com slash NFL60 and use code NFL60 for 60% off plus free shipping. A quarterback in the third round of the t- for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers could be more likely now than it ever has been leading up to the NFL draft and why some think Edge is a top two priority in the upcoming NFL draft, all coming up in this episode. But first, we start with Bijan Robinson because quite a buzz was stirred up when Bijan Robinson appeared on the Dan Patrick show and the Texas Longhorn star running back told uh, Pat Dan that the Buccaneers and the Eagles are the only two teams that he has visited with uh, so far on site. So he's been to Philly, he's been to Tampa, he's seen the facilities, they've seen him in person. The only two teams. Now, he did clarify he's had a lot of Zooms and, and all this other stuff with other teams, but the Bucks and the Eagles, the only two teams to bring him in for actual on-site visits. More mock drafts are now starting to pop up that have the Eagles taking Robinson at number 10. So the thought process a lot leading into like this week and this weekend has been that if the Eagles pass on him at number 10, that the Buccaneers will have a crack at him at number 19. Because the Eagles sitting at 30, that's kind of a high jump go from 30 to say 18 or 17 uh, to grab Bijan Robinson ahead of him. And let's be real, the Buccaneers trading up from number 19 to number nine with the Chicago Bears, who have already traded back once from the number one overall pick, just really isn't all that likely. And then you look at one step further, number eight with the Atlanta Falcons, that's even less likely because it's going to be one more costly moving up uh, another spot into the top 10. And the Atlanta Falcons, they're going to need to get paid because if they trade with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Bucs go get B. John Robinson, they are going to have a PR firestorm on their hands. So they're going to need to get paid to deal with that kind of backlash from their fan base. Also, it's interesting to know that Aaron Freeman, the host of the Locked On Falcons podcast, has been actively rallying for the Falcons to take B. John Robinson at number eight. Anyway, although Freeman did take Christian Gonzalez, the Oregon cornerback, in our network mock draft, at pick number eight, which you can find if you haven't yet on Locked on NFL's feed on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. But looking at mock draft database, according to the trends in mock drafting, Robinson is most likely to land with the Falcons at number eight. That is what the kind of the consensus trend says about Bijan Robinson's uh, draft stock. There's even a recent mock draft that had the Falcons trading up from eighth to fifth, uh, which I think is the Seattle Seahawks, which the Seahawks do like trading back to get Robinson. So not only Robinson to the Falcons at eight, but the Falcons maybe even trading up to fifth uh, overall to get him. So while the Robinson news was certainly exciting for Bucks fans and, and my good friend, good friend of the show, JC Cornell certainly was excited about the news and who can blame him. It almost actually is a little bit of bad news because we've definitely seen the trend of Bijan Robinson projection moving more and more up the board in the first round and, and the Buccaneers to trade up, you know, to take Bijan Robinson 19, there's already enough people who say that's just a luxury pick. It's not necessary. All these other things to trade up to get B. John Robinson uh, would only cause more. And and look, Jason Light, I don't think is going to sit in the draft room and say, well, you know, the fans may not like this. But the bottom line is fans don't like it for a reason. And the reason is because it's a little rich to go get a player, uh, even of Robinson's caliber. Now, 
It's also report, important to remember that a lot of times teams don't even draft the players that they bring in for top 30 visits, especially in the first round. And usually they draft someone that they don't bring in uh, for a top 30 visit in the first round. And the reason being because they don't want to tip their hand to other teams that, hey, we are interested in this player. So it almost kind of is starting to have the opposite effect where when a team brings in a day one projected player, people almost are going, well, they're not really interested in him or they're not actually going to draft him. They're only trying to drum up trade interest of, hey, they have Bijan visit Tampa. They're coming up on the clock. We want Bijan. Maybe we should call them, see if they can trade because we know they like him. So it's kind of an interesting dynamic uh, reverse psychology type of thing uh, going on. So the bottom line is the Falcons didn't bring Bijan Robinson in for an official visit. Uh, makes them almost more trend worthy towards being the team that actually pulls the trigger on uh, selecting him since he obviously fits a need there in Atlanta. And again, locked on Falcons host Aaron Freeman, a huge advocate of the Falcons spending the number eight overall pick on B. John Robinson. Uh, when we look at the top 30 visit history, uh, the 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 leagues and teams, they don't really release those publicly. So we never get an official quote unquote top 30 visit list. But doing a little bit of research, Logan Hall and Rashad White were the only players that the Buccaneers drafted who also had top 30 or in-person visits with the Buccaneers last year. And Logan Hall, you might say, well, Logan Hall was a top pick, and I get that, but he also was not a first-round pick. And despite the in-person visit, didn't inspire the Buccaneers to stick in the first round uh, and take him. So again, in-person visits don't usually translate to first-round selections. Um, even sometimes they don't translate to selections at all. Offensive lineman Luke Gedeke, for example, never took a visit that I could find with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, in person in Tampa, but was selected over another offensive lineman who did, like Ohio State's uh, Nicholas Petit Frere, who had an official visit with the Buccaneers um, and went 12 picks later. So same ballpark area. And uh, Petit Frere at Ohio State, Ohio State is an offensive tackle. Talking about Lou Gedeke moving offensive tackle. He was an offensive tackle in college as well. Then 12 picks later, Petit Frere goes uh, to the Titans. They also, the Buccaneers did, took Gedeke over Georgia running back James Cook who was selected six picks later. So again, in the same range uh, and had an official visit with the team as well. So um, again, a lot of times these, these visits are not necessarily the, the strongest piece of evidence to use for who uh, is interested in what players. Uh, but Robinson also isn't your typical prospect, right? He's the only player in this year's class that's really being discussed as a generational talent because even Alabama quarterback Bryce Young, while a lot of people have him as their number one quarterback and they say he's the best guy here, there's still some argument between him and C.J. Stroud. And bottom line is nobody's really calling either of these guys, Bryce Young or C.J. Stroud, the next Andrew Luck or Joe Burrow caliber quarterback that can come in and be a franchise flipping player for the team. But they do say that about B. John Robinson. They're saying that he's the best running back to enter the NFL since Saquon Barkley. And you saw just last year when Saquon can stay healthy, he's certainly, if not the best, one of the best running backs in the NFL. So if you're the Bucks or the Eagles, for that matter, with the Super Bowl window open, and you believe that he's that special, right? Leaning on Jason Light's own word, if you believe that running back is that special, then it makes sense that you might want to get a closer look. And you know what? Speculation be damned. Like, we don't care if you know we want him. We want him, and we want to get to know him even better than we already did. Um, so, you know, we're going to bring him in for a visit. So, again, there's a lot up in the air here, but if the recent mocks and the recent speculation is true, B. John Robinson's probably going to be off the board at number 10. So as exciting as this buildup has kind of been uh, about people, more and more people supporting the Buccaneers selecting B. John Robinson, I'm one of them. Like two weeks ago, I really wasn't on this train, but now I am on the B. John Robinson and the Bucs train. I'm also starting to wonder if he's just going to go too early and the Bucs aren't going to get a real crack at him. So B. John Robinson isn't the only interesting story coming from the catalog of mock draft assimilations. Uh, as a position of need, uh, but not that it's that high of a need. Edge is starting to gain ground as a favorite in Buccaneers mock draft. That's coming up next here on today's episode of Locked On Bucks, part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And we're going to talk about that thanks to our friends over at Built Bar, who has something exciting coming to Built.com on April 22nd. That is this Saturday. I don't have all the details yet, but the excitement is real. The, the, the DM chat, the NFL channel DM chat is popping on Twitter. Uh, with all kinds of speculation of what the new flavor might be, and it's going to be something you don't want to miss. If you know how Built works, they have the most incredible protein bars in the world, and they do these amazing flavor drops with unreal flavors and limited quantity. So mark your calendars and head to Built.com on Saturday, April 22nd to be one of the first to discover what all the hype is about. 
I can't wait to see what this new flavor is. Make sure you use the promo code LOCK15 and you'll get 15% off of that order. Again, that's at Built.com. Thanks for making Locked On Bucks your first listener and first view of the day. Locked On's NFL Mock Draft Special is here and it's bigger than ever. Follow along on all 32 teams, NFL or NFL teams, first picks in a six episode ultimate mock draft experience only Locked On can deliver. All episodes are available now on the Locked On NFL Draft YouTube feed or wherever you get your podcast. I got to tell you, too, if you're a Bucks fan, make sure you listen to the full mock. Don't just go to pick 19 and check out what happened. Listen to the entire mock draft. You're going to want to know what went down. Trust me, you're going to want to see or hear what happened in uh, that. So that's very interesting. Uh, another interesting trend that is starting to form in the mock draft world is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers taking an edge rusher early in the NFL uh, in the NFL draft. Now, edge is an interesting word in the NFL draft terms, right? Because it can mean either a down lineman defensive end or a stand up outside linebacker it really depends on the scheme. So the Buccaneers run a base three, four defense, right? So in a base three, four defense, when you're talking edge, you're talking about a stand-up outside linebacker. Defensive ends are still important. Don't get me wrong. And if you want to call a defensive end in a 3-4, an edge guy, that's fine. But you're typically not looking for the same amount of bend and, and all those things uh, out of a 3-4 defensive end that you are out of an outside linebacker. So last year, the Buccaneers took a defensive end in Logan Hall with their first pick. It, granted, it was in the second round, but it was still their first pick. And the year before, they took outside linebacker, edge defender, Joe Tryon Shoinka. In fact... Since Bruce Arians and his staff arrived, which eventually became Todd Bowles' staff, and you know now Todd has kind of put his own spin on the staff, sure, but since that group has arrived, three of the four top picks that the Buccaneers had since then have gone to defense. Linebacker Devin White was their first first-round draft pick in 2019, Joe Tryon Shoinka in 2021, and then Logan Hall, second-round pick, but the first pick that they made in 2022. The only offensive player, offensive tackle Tristan Wirfs in 2020, obviously that worked out pretty well. So you'd almost look at the trends and say, well, it's it's time, right? It's due. The Buccaneers are due. They haven't drafted an offensive player with their first pick since 2020. Now it's 2023. So they're due for an offensive player here, which is why B. John Robinson makes a lot of sense. Georgia offensive tackle Broderick Jones, Tennessee offensive tackle Darnell Wright, Oklahoma offensive tackle Anton Harrison. All of those guys make a lot of sense, right? Preferably sure some of those guys after a trade back. But there has been a rise of outside linebackers being targeted early for the Buccaneers by mock drafters lately. Not necessarily always in the first round. In fact, usually it's in the second round, but it is starting to rise up the board as a consistent need. That's not to say we haven't seen this before. I remember Pew Report Scott Reynolds had Kansas State edge uh, Felix and DK Uzama in one of his early mock drafts. So that's been there here and there, but it's really starting to pick up steam. Uh, now, and according to Mock Draft Database, the Bucks' consensus top pick in Mock Drafts is actually Alabama safety Brian Branch, which is interesting, but it does make sense because the Buccaneers do look like they need a nickel. Antoine Winfield Jr. did a lot of that last year, but you would love to see the Bucs be able to return him to basically just being a straight-up free safety, bring in a guy that could be a nickel, but also Brian Branch is a guy who has that safety ability, so you bring in depth for one position while you're bringing in a starter at another position, but Wild Branch is the most common, quote-unquote, pick. He's only taking up 10% of the market share. So only 10% of the time are the Buccaneers drafting Brian Branch. It just so happens to be that Brian Branch, that nobody else is hitting 10% of the mock drafts as the number one overall pick. That's how spread out this number one overall pick for the Buccaneers. Well, number 19 overall, number one for the Buccaneers pick has really been projected. And in fact, B. John Robinson, not surprisingly, is starting to eat up a more and more bigger part of that share. In fact, if you go look at mock draft database right now, B. John Robinson may have actually surpassed Brian Branch by this point. Last time I looked, uh, Brian Branch was still at 10%. B. John was at like 9.7%. So the more mock drafts that come out that have the Buccaneers targeting B. John, the more he's going to eat into that. Uh, Offensive tackle Darnell Wright also in that kind of top three list. But 75% of Buccaneers mock drafts actually go completely different directions. They don't go Branch. They don't go B. John. They don't go Dar Darnell Wright. They go completely different. And outside linebacker is starting to gain a little bit of steam. Miles Murphy out of Clemson is kind of that primary guy. And it seems to be coming from a place, I think, where people are both concerned about Shaquille Barrett's ability to return from his injury and concerned about Joe Tryon Shoinka not taking as big a step in year two as maybe we all kind of hoped he would. So since Shaq Barrett burst on the scene in 2019, Buccaneers free agent 
came to the Tampa Bay, got 19 and a half sacks for the Buccaneers. Barrett has since had seasons of eight and 10 sacks, and then he had three through eight games last year, so about a six sack pace, uh, depending on what he would have done, you know, with the rest of that game that he got injured in. Um, and then he was eventually, and then he was ultimately lost for the season, unfortunately. So he finished last season with uh, with just the three sacks in eight games played. Um, but appearing recently on the Loose Cannons podcast, Shaq recently said, quote, I'm ready to go. I'm going to be ready to go when it's time to go, and I'm pretty sure time to go will be the first game. I don't anticipate missing any games. I don't anticipate being on any play counts, so I should be ready to go for the first game for sure, end quote. Now, on the other side of things, right, so people are still concerned about Shaq's recovery, but on the other side of things, you have young Joe Tryon Shoinka and his rookie season where he started six games and got four sacks. Now, he started six games because Jason Pierre-Paul was still around. JPP started 12 games. Joe Tryon Shoinka started six. Uh, that was eventually JPP's last season with the team. and. That's a perfectly fine number, especially when you remember that Joe Tryon Schwinka had actually taken an extended break away from playing active football because of COVID. So coming off the COVID season, coming through the, the draft process uh, and getting four sacks and six starts as a rookie, not bad at all. You saw a lot of flash. You saw a lot of potential. But in 2022, he was the full time starter and he still got only four sacks. Now, OK, four sacks rookie year is now only four sacks in your second year. Uh, his tackles only climbed by 11. Uh, despite despite the fact they started 10 more games, uh, he got four more quarterback hits and one more tackle for loss. So minor, minor increases in some other statistical categories and no increase in the most important statistical category, uh, the sack box. So simply put, we just didn't see the climb from year one to year two that we wanted to see out of Joe Tryon Choinko. So when you stack up JTS against other three, four outside linebackers that were drafted in 2021, and look, JTS was the only first round outside linebacker drafted that year, and only two were drafted in the top 50. The other one was Aziz Ojolari, who went to the New York Giants at pick 50. So when you look at all the three, four outside linebackers drafted in 2021, Joe Tryon Shoinka ranks fifth in sacks, fifth in tackles, seventh in tackles for loss, and third in quarterback hits. He was the first one taken. And he ranks no higher than third in any statistical category. In fact, if you're going to look at investment compared to return, you spent a first round pick on JTS, and it's got to be incredibly disheartening that seventh round draft pick Jonathan Cooper is either tied with JTS or has more sacks, tackles, tackles for loss, or quarterback hits than Joe Tryon Schoenke does during two seasons. And Cooper has only started 14 games while JTS has started 22. So, when you couple those two things, you couple JTS and his disappointing performance in year two, along with Shaq's injury uh, and the fact that Shaquille Barrett is just two years away from his contract expiring, this being year one. So you got 2023, 2024. Shaq is not under contract for 2025. Shaq's also coming off that injury. And Shaquille Barrett is on the wrong side of 30. He turns 31 this coming season. JPP's last season with the Bucks, he was 32. So if you mirror those two, next year would be the equivalent for Shaq Barrett of JPP's last season uh, in Tampa. Bodies don't break down the same way, right? So I'm not saying that's exactly uh, a death sentence, but just kind of putting some relativity to it. Shaquille Barrett getting a little bit long in the tooth for the NFL, coming off the injury, uh, and then JTS, you know, not kind of boosting his performance in year two is the nicest way I can say it. So you can understand when you look at all those factors, you can understand the rise in edge coming up people's draft boards for the Buccaneers. In fact, it could actually be accelerated than that or more accelerated than that because the Buccaneers could actually save $7 million in cap space if they were to release Barrett following the 2023 NFL season in the 2024 offseason. Again, I think we all love Shaq. You know what I mean? But depending on how the production goes, depending on how the recovery from injury goes, if the Buccaneers are aware that there is a situation where they can move on from him, they might have to make a move this season because not only would they save $7 million next year, but they would also save themselves from the $12 million dead cap hit that is coming in the 2025 offseason if they don't keep him because of the void year contracts that will accelerate up uh, to that point. So you don't want to see that happen. But if you are the Bucks, you have to be aware of the possibility that an outside linebacker over the age of 30 coming off of an injury the way that he is simply may not return to form. And Joe Tryon Shoinka in two years has not shown a good amount of development up to now. Now you hope that both of those things 
are wrong. But the likelihood of both of those things, the likelihood of Joe Tryon Schwinga taking that third year leap and Shaq Barrett being the best Shaq Barrett we know, both of those things being true, very, very unlikely uh, to happen. NFL history would just tell us that that's unlikely to happen. And that makes a potential second round selection of Kansas State's Felix and Udike Uzama or Auburn's Derek Hall or LSU's BJ Ojolari or even a potential late first round pick of Clemson's Mile Murphy if he slides down the board starts to make a little bit more sense. So you can kind of understand why Edge is rising up the board a little bit. We'll see if that impacts our final Locked On Bucks mock draft next week before we hit the NFL draft. But today, could the Buccaneers be adding another young quarterback to the roster next NFL draft weekend? They could. But he may not be the guy that you think we're talking about. That's coming up right now on Locked on Bucks. It's rumor season, speculation season, all of that. And ever since Brock Purdy burst onto the scene, everyone has been wondering what the San Francisco 49ers were going to do with 2021 number three overall pick quarterback Trey Lance. And this week, NFL Network's Ian Rappaport reported but the 49ers have gotten several calls about the possibility of trading Trey Lance, but also says the 49ers are not actively seeking to trade the quarterback. San Francisco beat reporter Matt Mayoko, Mayoko, I believe is how you say his name, wrote a piece basically saying uh, that this should be taken nothing more than the fact that the 49ers have always said that they're open to receiving calls about any player. You want Christian McCaffrey? You can have, we can talk, I don't say you can have, but we can talk Christian McCaffrey. You, uh, Debo Samuel, we can talk about Debo Samuel, right? Nick Bosa, we can talk about Nick Bosa. Basically, the Niners have a stance of they'll receive any call about any player you want to talk about. doesn't mean they want to trade them. But I think that stance, honestly, is just a cute way of hiding any real trade intentions from the public. So no matter who the player is, you can always come out and say, well, we take every call. You know what I mean? You know, it doesn't matter who the player is. We'll, we'll take every call. Um, and while that may satisfy Twitter, that's not going to fly when you have to start breaking down where the 49ers are in their team building process and their franchise state. Bottom line is this is a team that looked like its Super Bowl window was starting to close, right? The quarterback that got them to the Super Bowl, Jimmy Garoppolo, didn't have enough defense healthy on his side to beat the Kansas City Chiefs, so they don't win that Super Bowl. But then ever since, Jimmy G is getting a year older and he's getting a year more injured and banged up and just simply never got them over the hump. So they go and they draft Trey Lance, hoping that he's going to reinvigorate the quarterback room quarterback position and frees them up to spend a little bit more cap space on weapons and the defense, which is what they did, which is what a lot of teams do with a rookie quarterback contract. But that rookie quarterback, Trey Lance, 2021, didn't pan out in 2022. And the team looked dead in the water when both Jimmy G and Trey Lance went out with injuries. The problem is that defense still good enough to maybe get you in the 20s and maybe get you a playoff appearance. So you're in this purgatory situation where you've got a really good defense that's going to make sure you're not picking top five, but you don't have a quarterback that can get you to the Super Bowl. So the, the Niners really looked like they were dead in the water and just kind of stuck in NFL purgatory. But then comes Brock Purdy, Mr. Irrelevant himself, and the NFL gods smiled down on the San Francisco 49ers and basically gave him four more years of championship relevancy. It would appear if Brock Purdy can continue doing what he did before his injury injury. And that elbow injury basically gifted the Eagles the easiest NFC Championship win in the history of NFC Championship games. And that elbow injury, I think, is what has people a little bit shook right now. If it wasn't for that elbow injury, I think if Brock Purdy, even if the Niners lose the NFC Championship game, if Brock Purdy is healthy this offseason, I think Trey Lance might already be gone. To be quite honest with you, he might have already been traded. But the 49ers know that there's a recovery process for Brock. And to be quite honest with you, that kind of injury, right? We talk about Shaq Barrett, whether or not he's going to bounce back. Brock Purdy's actual injury and the surgery that he has has a very real possibility of his never being able to return uh, to the form that we saw just last year in his rookie year. By the time we get to the NFL draft, the Niners will know more. He'll be another week you know, past his surgery. Brock Purdy will be, and the Niners will know more. And given general manager John Lynch's recent comments about Purdy earning the right to be the starter in San Francisco and all those other things, I think it seems like the Niners are pretty confident moving forward with Brock Purdy. If that's true, then you honestly have no business not trading your backup quarterback for any type of draft capital if it's going to get you something somewhat significant. We're talking fourth round or better, which I do think the, the Niners could get for Trey Lance. And the Buccaneers happen to be a team that is on the prowl, on the search for its potential franchise quarterback of the future. Now, if we're being real about it, though, the 49ers aren't trading Trey Lance 
unless an offer blows their socks off is what they say. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to say that's creative language because what does blowing their socks off take? It's not going to be a first rounder. You're not getting a first round pick for Trey Lance. The best you're going to get for Trey Lance, in my opinion, is a third round pick because he wasn't doing all that well for your team before he got injured. And he, again, he's coming off of a season and the injury. So I think you're getting a third round pick for Trey Lance at best. Uh, and I think that really only comes to play for Tampa Bay if they don't get Hendon Hooker. I think if you don't get Hendon Hooker in the third round or he simply just isn't available in the third round, then you get on the phone. So when you look at Hooker's scheme fit from college to pros, there's a concern there. Hooker's coming from a very scheme quarter or a zone friendly or a, a spread friendly quarterback friendly scheme in college to a pro system. Didn't have to make a lot of reads. All these things in Tennessee. So that's a concern. You look at the injury. That's a concern. You look at Hendon Hooker's age. That also is a concern. I think when you look at Hendon Hooker and you look at Trey Lance at this point in time, you have equal odds that either of these guys could be your future franchise leader for the next 10 years or so. So if that's the case, I've had had Hendon Hooker. You know, we've been very, very vocal advocates of the Buccaneers drafting Hendon Hooker, but that's been a third round projection for us, not a second round projection that some people are starting to talk about or even late first round projection that some people are talking about. And while some have talked about Hooker going in the second or the first, I still think if I'm the Bucs, I'm sticking with a third round uh, projection on him. I'm targeting him in the third round. If he's not there, if he goes before that, then I get on the phone with John Lynch during draft weekend and I see if we can strike a deal. And honestly, a team trying to get over that Super Bowl hump the way the San Francisco is, I might ask him how they feel about Devin White for Trey Lance straight up. Maybe I try to get Trey Lance in a fourth, right? We don't have a fourth round pick right now. So I try to get Trey Lance in a fourth rounder for Devin White since Devin has one fewer Super Bowl wins than Trey Lance has regular season wins. Sorry, Trey. It's just, it's just facts. So I trade you a Super Bowl winning team captain linebacker, right? Super athletic, a super aggressive guy that you know you like on your defense. And you probably extend him to a super fat contract. You stick Brock Purdy on that rookie contract. So you've got three more years of that. You pay Devin White and you see if he can be part of the catalyst that gets you over the Super Bowl hump. You send me Trey Lance and a fourth round pick so I can reset that rookie scale on that four year deal with that fourth rounder. Uh, and we go from there. And now I've got myself the uh, fourth round pick that James Jarko has failed to deliver me. So Niners Wire did some mock drafts or some mock trades rather, and they involved the Buccaneers in one. They projected the Buccaneers giving them pick number 50 for Trey Lance. Again, second round pick. I think that's too rich if I'm Jason Light. If I'm giving you number 50, you better be giving me Trey Lance in a third or something like that. Like that's the only way I'm putting number number 50 uh, in there. Bleacher Report crafted a mock trade between the Bucs and the Niners where they have the Bucs giving number 82, which is a third round pick. And like I said, that is my third round pick. And that's only if Hendon Hooker is not there. Honestly, if Hendon Hooker is there, I'd rather take Hendon Hooker, start on a four-year rookie contract from there and see where we go versus getting Trey Lance. I've got two years plus a potential fifth-year option uh, left on him. And look, you have no reason if you're the Buccaneers to stop looking for a franchise quarterback. This isn't about believing or not believing in Kyle Trask, believing or not believing in Baker Mayfield. The bottom line is neither of these men has done anything, mostly because of opportunity. They haven't had the opportunity, but they bottom line haven't proven to you that you they are your future franchise quarterback. Until you have a franchise quarterback, you have no business not looking for a franchise quarterback. And it's hard to ignore that Lance does have a lot of tools that when you look at offense coordinator Dave Canales, He's done a lot of good things with those types of tools and made Pro Bowl quarterbacks out of those types of tools. While Lance really doesn't fit the mold of quarterbacks that have done well under Kyle Shanahan. You look at Kyle Shanahan quarterbacks, look at the ones that have been successful. They don't really fit Trey Lance's skill set. So it kind of is a, is a weird marriage uh, to begin with. And we all know coaching matters absolutely matters. So who knows? Trey Lance coming to Tampa uh, could be something that helps both sides of the fence. But again, I would not pay more than a third round pick. And, and I honestly, I would try to see, you know, I'll give you Devin white. You give me Trey Lance in a fourth uh, and we all move forward. So let me know what you think of that. Let me know what your trade offers are. If you're just out on Trey Lance completely, I don't, I, you know, uh, couldn't, it'd be hard to blame anybody for just being out on Trey Lance uh, completely. In the meantime, I want to thank you all again for making lockdown bucks first listen or your first view every single day for our every dares. we got one more mock draft Monday coming up. So make sure you get your mock draft submitted. See if you can get it on the show and get in on our draft giveaways that we've got coming up. You can do that via email, 
by sending them into locked on bucks podcast at gmail.com or DM us at locked on bucks on Twitter for James Jarkham, David Harrison. Until we speak again, please make sure you're checking out everything going on at bucksgameday.com, bucksnation.com. Follow us on Twitter at dharrison82 at jarko underscore bucks and at locked on bucks. If you're out and about, please be safe, be kind to one another, fire the cannons, and we thank you for joining us right here on locked on bucks, part of the locked on podcast network, your team every day.